In this Oslo video, I'm going to show how to trace a single ray through a system. This is a basic skill. It's very useful in many cases. Often you want to know where a ray is going through a system or what its angles are with respect to surfaces or lots of other pieces of data like that. As I do this, you're going to see terms like ordinary ray possibly and reference ray. An ordinary ray is a ray that has a given location at the object and then launches at a given angle. A reference ray is ones where it's given an initial point on the object and must pass through a given point in the syst through the system and that is uh, requires a different type of ray tracing. It's called a Hamiltonian ray versus an ordinary ray which is a Lagrangian ray. The reason why we might want to do this is we might want to exactly locate where the stop is for a given uh, sorry, the entrance pupil is for a given field point or specifically make sure that that ray is going to go through a given point on the stop. The most common types of cases would be from a given object point to go through the center of the stop in the system because remember the stop in the system is a, is a physical uh, thing like a retaining ring or something like that. So that's what those mean. Please look up uh, more in our documentation if you'd like to see more on it. Uh, for this example, I will be using uh, two examples. One of them is the double Gauss example. So just really quickly, it's been slightly modified. I've made it where the last surface is drawn. That's uh, done in this box inside of the surface control general and drawn. I've also uh, made this surface 11 a pickup and uh, this previous surface now is also checked. This pickup is on to surface 10. And then one other thing that I've actually done here is I've gone, if you go to the ray set, I've actually added one that goes through the top of the pupil, the FY1 location in the pupil. So that is what those are. By the way, that was the RSE command for the ray set if you do want to look that up. Okay, so when you trace a single ray through the system, you need to know what field point is it coming from? If you have a finite object, it's just where it is. If you have an object that's really far away, infinitely far away, then of course this is an angle essentially that you're defining. And so you need to, in order to do that effectively, we need to define our uh, object point. So the command for this is set object point, SOP. So there the SOP command simply uh, did nothing because it was set to zero zero. But if I do SOP one, that will actually set this now to be the uh, blue rays here, which is the farthest out in the field that I have. It's at the uh, full field effectively. Actually, I think it might be, uh, this is minus one. And so I would be doing ones from the other side. So anyway, regardless of that point, the uh, it's important in many Oslo commands to know what object point you're looking at and that's what FBY is and FBX and FBZ. These are telling you where you are uh, on an object. FBY in this case comes before FBX and that's simply because Y is used for the object consistently in Oslo for some reason when it was first set up this was set up backwards to a Cartesian system and it takes a little bit of getting used to so just be aware of that. The other type of parameter that we're going to care about later is you're going to see things like FY and FX. Those are locations in the pupil for a ray. All right, so let's now look at a little bit more information. Let's actually look at the standard ray trace command. So I knew the command name was TRA. You could type in standard ray trace. This command is actually located here under evaluate single ray trace when we want to run it. Uh, or you could just type in TRA and work with the commands if you'd like. So when we run this command, uh, we're going to get output for There's going to be some input options. It takes a little bit of getting used to for the input options. It asks for things like, uh, actually, let's just look at it. Hey, we got the program right here. Why not? So here we go, single ray trace. It says, do you want standard or full? If something's missing that you like, put it on full. Uh, local coordinates is what I almost always work in, but if you are working in a system with global, you might use that option. The surface selection option here, uh, you can specify a given set of surfaces, first surface number, last surface number, or you can choose all of them if you would like. I'll just uh, click on the all command here. You can specify with this F, Y and FX, the fractional pupil coordinates you would want. So FY 1.0 would be right at the top. 
fx of minus 1 would be all the way to the uh, side that's at the minus 1 side for the x coordinate, a local coordinate for that surface. So that's the kind of stuff you can do. If you use a ray number, and this may not be, I'm not entirely sure if this is in all versions of Oslo. I know it's in standard and I know it's in premium. If you go to the ray number, you can specify a ray number. And that was that ray set that I showed earlier. We had ray one went through the center of the pupil and then uh, ray number two so if I put the two in here, it will actually trace the ray that's going through the uh, very top of the pupil. So I specified that already. You can also change wavelengths, print spreadsheet numbers, and you can do other things like fraction efficiency. And if you uh, don't know where to find this SOP command, which is a command I think everyone should know to change the object point, you can also change that right here with the set object point. So really good stuff. Here, we're just gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and run this so we can look at the output. So the output for this, if I pull the help back up again really quickly, the output will give us uh, coordinates. It will give us the uh, y angle and x angle, and that's between the z axis and the projection of the ray uh, exiting the surface. D is the distance along the surface from the previous surface. Uh, there's also, if you do full, you're going to get direction cosines, and you're also going to get incident angle and refracted or reflected angle after it goes through that given surface. Obviously, if you're going through air and it's a dummy surface or something, those angles shouldn't change. The optical path length traces the ray from the object sphere to the surface. A little bit uh, too much detail to get into that. There's also some additional types of things if you're using uh, polarization or other, other kinds of things like that. So here's our output for this. And you can see it's not too bad to read. One thing is when you see this slash, be aware that the incident angle of this ray on the first surface, the first surface is curved. So this particular ray has a almost three degree angle of incidence on that first uh, surface. And then after it refracts, it's got a 1.73. That's measured with respect to the surface normal. And so that's a very, very useful thing to have a hold of. So that's basically it. There are some variations of this. Uh, the TRR command, which is um, identical to the SOP command, it basically traces a reference ray through. I'll just show you this really fast. So there we trace a reference ray through. Um, and there's also TRG, which doesn't actually spe uh, require you to specify uh, that object point. So you can look those up if you want. The TRA command is the one that I'm going to be using uh, primarily here. So one other thing I'd just like to show right now, because it is so darn useful, is let me clear this. Oops. Restore the toolbar now. Let me clear this. Um, <clears throat> oh, look, when you restore the toolbar, I did not know this. See, you learn things all the time. There, that little thing uh, disappeared. Remember, this little button here allows us to turn things on and off. So if we, uh, one thing I really want to show is if we go back to that ray set, so this is under optimize and it's the ray set. Here's the ray at the top of the pupil. Well, if I want to trace that specific ray through here and I go to the single ray trace, again, I want the full output. Uh, let's just go ahead and only look at the last surface in the system. In this particular case, and I go here to ray number and I put two in. It would actually trace that uh, ray and that's through the edge of the pupil. So that allows me to see where given points are. And actually even the SOP command can use the field point set. So you can actually test rays out to find with the field points and the ray set numbers. Why do we care about that? Well, things like the merit function use those ray sets. So it's really important to know how to get at that data and be able to run and analyze uh, those pieces of information. Those are that's a more convenient way than typing in the number for FX, FY, FBX, FBY all the time. You can just use the field point and ray points uh, if possible. So that's really useful. Now I'm going to show a couple, just a few examples, just to show you how useful this really can be. So let's clear this again. All right, so here's uh, this double gauss example. And uh, I've been running the rays through here. Let's just take one look. Let's say that I've got this surface checked. I make it 18. You can look right in our ray picture here. Well, it's getting cut off here now. I've made it smaller and it's checked. So that ray is going to get blocked. So how would that look inside of our trace uh, ray command? So if I just hit TRA down here, by the way, this will also pop this up. So I need that point out at the edge. I am at the, I should still be at the full field. 
And again, I, I like the full option here. And if we click on this, it says Ray is outside the aperture at surface 10. If I wanted to know, well, what was happening with that Ray heading all the way up to 10? If I come in here and I just select all, and again, full, I like full being on, you can see it traces it uh, all the way up. Oh, look, in this case, I had forgotten to change. This is easy to do. You always have to be really careful. So I go into the command this time. I just happen to know that this is what it is. And uh, in this previous case, I was going through the center of the pupil. Now I've gone to the edge, and you can see it's getting blocked. So it traces it all the way up to 9. Just kind of nice uh, data to have. A second thing that you can do with this that is darned useful is, let's say I have a coating, and I care about angles on it. Or I have a case where I have a sensor, and I care about how that bundle is hitting. Uh, this thing is often called uh, chief ray angle, CRA. Um, I call it kind of how far you are from telecentric, telecentric being zero degrees where all the cones would hit perpendicular to the surface. This is a great command to do this analysis, whether you're tracing one ray at a time or a set of rays or writing a command to trace a bunch of them in, at, one, um, at, at one time. So if I want to do that, I can run just a single ray trace. I definitely want my full output here and when I hit OK you can see we're at 12 degrees and that's with respect to surface 12 which was my image surface so we're 12 degrees off from being um, perpendicular to that surface there's a 12 degree incident angle that is really useful type of data to have the last example uh, the last thing I'm going to show is in another example I actually had a I actually showed a total internal reflection. It turns out this file isn't quite right. This isn't quite total internally reflecting yet, but if I make this 40 degrees rotation, I'm basically making a larger uh, incident angle on this back surface, and you can reach a point when you're going from a higher index to a lower index where you actually don't have the light going through. So I could do the same kind of thing here, and in this particular case, it doesn't really matter. How I do this, I just trace the ray through, and you can see it says total internal reflection at surface three. If I wanted to see more data on this, I could always go and hit the all surfaces, and it'll trace it all the way up until that ray uh, fails going through. One last thing that I will mention, in addition to getting TRA down here, you can also if we turn on the ray trace, there's a set of rays like the bottom ray through the system, the chief ray, the top ray, and then a skew ray. And you can just look at what each of these does by uh, where you are. Uh, the double gauss would be a little more interesting, but that's okay. Um, actually, double gauss would be very much more interesting. Let me go back to that. So going back to the double gauss for this, my apology. So we go to the skew ray, for example, that's tracing out to the FX1 location. The top goes to the top ray, chief ray through the center, the bottom ray goes through the bottom, and then the reference ray, however you have it defined. So you can also get that through those commands. So this, uh, maybe when you're first starting, doesn't necessarily seem, it's not always obvious when you're gonna use this, but it's a basic skill in the program. You should definitely know how to do it.